Hey fellas, how's it going? I hope you're doing well and stuff. So in this video we're going to be painting this pretty awesome looking paint job that you see right in front of your eyes right now. And more importantly, I'm going to show you how to make this awesome looking scale stencil that was kind of a requested video from me, so I'm more than happy to oblige. Alright, let's start with the scale stencil first. Uh, I've made this glide bait specifically kind of for this video, um, calling this uh, model Muruskun Kutsuya, which means in English, Color of Storms. Pretty metal name, hey? Anywho, I'm just going to use the outlines of this lure to, um, you know, get the overall shape that I need for my stencil. Right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to base the whole scale stencil around this lateral line that I've already drawn into this uh, stencil piece. Or oh, is it stencil? Actually, I'm not sure. Anyway, it probably doesn't matter. Anyways, I'm going to mark in uh, four millimeter increments where the scale is supposed to start. So now that I have the start point for all of the scales marked out into the piece of paper. I'm just going to use those points to use this other stencil to get the right angle that I want for the scales so that they actually will look like scales and not just round shapes, which a lot of people I know do and probably doesn't really matter to fish what they look like, but it matters to me. And uh, I just want to make them look as realistic as I possibly can. I'm going to basically repeat what I just did on the other piece, but I'm going to go to the other direction this time around uh, to create these diamond shapes that will then turn into scales. So now that I have the diamond grid pattern established, I can start um, freehanding the scales. And freehanded and freehanded, I mean, I'm still kind of constricted um, to work inside the diamond patterns. However, I'm doing it uh, this way because um, on a real fish, uh, the scales are not exactly the same. So you want to have a little bit of that variation in there to make everything look a little bit more realistic. One last thing I need to draw before I can actually start cutting anything, and that is to highlight all of the holes that are supposed to be the lateral line. Since the choice of material that I choose to use for my stencil is paper, and most of my paints that I use are water-based, uh, those two don't really mix well, and I want to get some longevity out of this stencil, so I'm just going to cover it with packing tape. The cutting portion of this uh, whole process is probably the most nerve-wracking and I think it goes without saying that you kind of want to go as slow as possible and actually try to be consistent with all the cuts that you make, uh, meaning that um, whenever you do a cut, you kind of use the same body motion to translate it into all of the other scales, if that makes sense. That's at least how I usually try to do it, so that I have um, the same amount of movement every time when I do the cuts. Compared to the scales, cutting the lateral line is way easier because you obviously have just one slicing cut that you do and there's not that much that can go wrong here, but I would still go slow. And lastly, I'm just going to cut out the scales and this is the part where everything can go horribly wrong and uh, you might ruin your stencil completely. So I think it goes without saying that you want to go slow as possible again. And what I usually try to do um, with the other hand that I'm not using to cut the scale, I'm going to pin down the piece of paper near the scale that I'm cutting so that it's pinned down and doesn't have a lot of movement. So 
So now that I'm done with the scale cutting, I'm just going to trim out the excess and leaving maybe uh, one centimeter around the scales. This will give me a place to attach the masking tape that I will be using to pin down the uh, scale stencil onto the lure. So the scale stencil is done and I can start doing some painting. And I've chosen this kind of a dark soccer pattern that I, I will be attempting to paint here. And I'm going to start with the background color that are going to be behind the scales. And I'm going to start off by using this yellow. The next and dominant background color that I've chosen to use here is sepia. And this will be a really awesome looking um, background color for any kind of darker patterns that you might want to do. And it's not really that overpowering, so it still will have this kind of a not too stark of a contrast with, um, let's say, gold that I will be using on this particular pattern. And yes, I'm just going to use mostly the sepia color on the background here. And uh, after that we can start painting the scales. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be attaching this scale stencil onto the lure with masking tape to make sure that it stays firmly in place and it's nice and snug. So when I do end up spraying the gold uh, paint here, I'm not going to get any overspray and all the lines that I will be getting are going to be nice and crisp. All right, let's put that scale stencil into work and paint the scales. And I think I mentioned this in my previous video that I absolutely love and hate this Createx uh, chrome gold color because it's so liquidy and you have to spray many layers to actually get the full effect of it. But um, the effect is pretty awesome. And um, one thing that you might want to be careful of is uh, when you have finished with your painting, just put the lure somewhere away and don't touch it for a while because it takes some time for the paint to dry. So perhaps uh, a good idea here what would be to use some sort of hair dryer or something to dry the lure. All right, let's move on with this paint job. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some white into the belly and this gives me a really good base to actually add any kind of color here that I want. But I'm going to keep things natural and just going to add some uh, pearlescent white. I mentioned that I want to keep uh, things nice and natural with this uh, paint job. So I'm just going to use this Createx uh, Platinum uh, Pearlescent White, which has kind of a creamy effect to it, which I really like. Next I'm going to be adding some background colors to the head area. And I decided to use the exact same sepia that I use for the scale parts, just to tie everything together nicely. Alright, next we're going to move on to the head details. And I'm going to do, be using that same gold chrome that I used for the scales. And for the stencil I decided to opt to using masking tape that I've cut into the shape that I want to have on the mouth.
painting the head details is a fairly straightforward process. I just move my way back with various stencils that I made specifically for this lure. And if you want to see how to make stencils like this, I'm gonna link a previous video that I made on the topic. Now that I have all the head details painted, or at least um, the shape of them where they're supposed to be, um, I'm still gonna add some other details like uh, highlights and stuff like that to them, but that's later. Now we're just going to paint the back and I'm just gonna use this dark brown to do it. Next we're going to move on to the fins and I actually wanted to make this a little bit more fancier than what I would usually do and I'm actually going to have three different background colors and then of course the, the fin rays. Now the fins are looking nice and crisp, almost lifelike, I'm gonna move on to other details and adding some highlights into the head area. And I'm gonna start with pink.
I don't think I've ever gone this far in any of my other videos, but I'm gonna paint uh, the gill rake parts underneath the, the jawline. And I'm gonna start with uh, background color, which is gonna be that sepia again. And then I'm gonna be moving on to white and actually painting them very similarly as I would the fin rays. I decided to jazz up the uh, overall look and add a little bit more flair into the paint job and actually do some highlights around the head details. And I'm just gonna be using this burnt umber to do it. I decided to add kind of an open mouth effect on the lure. So I need to mask around the mouth area first, and then I'm just going to spray a little bit of black into that area, which will then hopefully make it look like the mouth is slightly opened. Alright, that's all for me now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And also you can become a Patreon supporter if you want. Um, yeah. See you guys on the next one.